last night. Uh, who is the friend that phoned Brad? Because yeah. Kyle's not in the room. Can't tell you. He knows him. I know him. It's not you, though. What's that? It's not you. You are a friend, too. No. Ken, you had a chance to evaluate Juchar this morning. How do you think, or what do you make of his status for tonight? Um, he's going to be game time, but uh, if he comes off of IR, I think there's conversations that he has to have with a uh, doctor. And if he comes off IR, then we'll put him in. So uh, he's passed all our tests, but now there's communication with the doctor that has to take place, and he's doing that now. Ken, I want to ask you about Sam Gagne, and he just looks rejuvenized getting back in the league, and he's, he's a smart player that's able to play with, with Dreisaitl and McDavid and those, those kind of cerebral players. What have you seen out of him, and what do you like about his game right now? Well, when his pace is up and he's able to play with pace, he's, uh, he's effective. Um, when he tries to play standing still, uh, he's not as effective, and that's what we're trying to do is work with him pace-wise. He has an element in his game he can find scoring pockets. He's got. He's smart. He's a real pro. Uh, but as you know, this is a game of pace right now. So when he plays with that pace, he shows that he's capable of that. Then we we feel like we can push him up the lineup, and he can help us. Um, when the pace is down, then uh, you know we got to move him back down the lineup. But right now, um, you know that's that's the element we're trying to. Push that at practice. I think a lot of it comes from overthinking. And when he just plays, then he he's plays with pace that he can more than keep up in the game and brings in an element that we don't have. And, you know, we're going to obviously play him with Leon today and, uh, and start that way. But, uh, you know, he, he's got a terrific opportunity. And like I said, if he's able to keep up skating-wise, then he's going to help that line. Did you know much about him before you acquired him? I know we knew a lot about him, but did you know him as, as well as a player? Not really. You know, like I, it's funny, I, you know, we, obviously I knew his dad well and, uh, and things like that, and I knew him as a player, but I didn't pay any attention to him. I think the thing that surprised us when they said, well, he's, he can't keep up, you know, at the NHL level, that's why he went down the American League. We don't see that. You know, we see the overthinking, but we, we don't see pace as a problem at all. And, uh, um, and we're trying to get it so it's just automatic. I think sometimes he's such a cerebral player that in this day and age, when you play thinking too much, you slow down. And we're just trying to get him to just play and use his instincts. And when he does that, he's, he's really effective for us. Ken, right here. Um, during, during the All-Star break, you talked about how you were trying to get these guys to buy into a system and buy into each other. And it... It seemed like that wasn't happening, but now all of a sudden you guys have found that. I mean, is, has it just taken this long or, you know, what's changed? Um, well, it's an ongoing process, to be honest with you. Uh, it's, um, best way to describe it is you, in order to win in the National Hockey League, you have to check. And it, there's tremendous details that go into that. You have to stop on pucks. You have to win races to pucks. You got to win the puck support game. These are all working elements that have to become automatic. And until they're automatic, you 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 stop and start. You stop and start all the time. What's it's becoming automatic with our team now. And when you get that in your game, you can win with diminished lineups. You can win missing people. You can win uh, a third game in four nights because. You have the, the right details in your game. And it doesn't happen overnight. It's not automatic that teams can do this. This is tremendous focus that needs to be in your game to play like this. But you see teams that are 100-point teams um, that they're missing six, seven guys out of their lineup. They're still winning hockey games. It's because they have that foundation. And that's the foundation we're looking for. And that's what we're getting now. We're starting to see that foundation in place, and it's given us a chance to win every night. Ken, you haven't beaten the Canucks in regulation time this year. Why have they proven to be such a pesky opponent, do you think? Because we haven't scored five on five. I'm not sure we've even scored a five on five goal yet. Um, we can't seem to penetrate their checking five on five. And we've, we feel like we've had lots of scoring chances, but we've not finished. And uh, I think... 
it puts pressure in other elements of your game when you're not scoring five on five. And um, they they play a very patient game against us, and um, we're, we we can't seem to penetrate and create extended offensive zone time. Uh, we we show flashes of it. The last time we played them, we showed great flashes of it in their building, but we're not consistent enough in, in creating enough five-on-five, five, to be honest with you. Ken, you've, uh, because of uh, Leon and Connor, you'll switch them up depending on, on the, how the game is going, and usually that means uh, Nugent Hopkins, uh, he'll be the other one switching with Leon. Do you, do you like Nugent Hopkins better as a center or a winger? Or as a center. You know, we're, we're in the situation where um, they're... How, where I play Leon and where I play Connor depends on what the opposition is doing, matchup-wise. So if I feel like they've got a beat in, it's a lot easier to put this to your two best, if you're the opposition coach, it's a lot easier, for instance, when, she, when we coached against Chicago, when Kane and Taze were on the same team, or same line, it was much easier for us. They, it was a hard group to handle, but you had singular focus. And when I split, when those guys got split up, it becomes much harder. We feel split up. Leon and Connor are, are more effective for us, but we still have to be able to generate off of that. So um, if I feel we're not generating enough, then I'll go put them back together immediately. I'm not going to hesitate. So ideally then, if we look big picture for next year, would you want to run McDavid, Drysaddle, and Nugent Hopkins as three centers and then get enough quality wingers? Well, it's a luxury that you'd like to have selfishly as a coach, but I don't pay the bills. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I, I think that's kind of the blueprint, but um, you don't know until you see what your roster is. It, you, you need to have a high level of IQ to keep up to, to Connor and Leon, especially Connor. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it, you gotta be a, you got to be a real quick thinking player to play with him we'll see moving forward but on paper that looks like a great fit Ken just uh, quickly inside um, Darnell was talking about how it every game like you know it's playoff vibes and these guys some of these guys got a taste of that two years ago do you see them with that kind of mentality playing right now or are they playing like that yeah we we're in a singular focus right now we're all we're doing is looking ahead Nobody's looking at us right now because we're below the bar in the standings. Nobody's looking at us. And when you're in this situation, all you do is look up. And that's what I'm trying to get these guys to do is that this is doable for us uh, because of our schedule, but we got to take advantage of it. And we got to have a focus where the next day is the next day. Regardless of what happens tonight, the next day is the next day because there's a certain record that you're going to have to have to get in. And if we can't get too far ahead of ourselves, and we can't get too discouraged if something good doesn't happen. And I like where we're at. You know, we're mentally, we're excited by the opportunity here. We're excited by the way we're playing. Yesterday's practice was probably as good a hockey practice as we've had all year. And we, we're in the right place mentally. Now we've got to produce at home. And we've got to play, we've got to play at home the way we're capable of from a working standpoint. We've got a good foundation based on the last two home games we played. That's what we got to build off of. But we can't just come out tonight and throw our sticks on the ice and expect to go back and play that way and win. We we got We know what we have to do. Okay, Jimmy, sorry. You're not getting that one. You got to search a little deeper than that. You mean cheating? <laughs> oh, it's better with Sakara because there's a calmness there. So, you know, Sakara brings a calmness to the game, and I think it's made Bat a lot better player. This is the best Matt's played since I've been here right now. But I think the pair is slotted in the right place. I think they play the right amount of minutes right now, and Sakara really helps them. They get themselves out of trouble a lot easier than they did before. And that's what I was saying yesterday is that we, we're better in our own end because we're not sticking ourselves back in D-zone coverage again. We're starting to transition the puck properly to allow other people to get involved in the exit. 
And I think Sakara has really helped Matt calm down a little bit as 